All right, so at the time of recording this, this is literally the most powerful gaming laptop available on the market. This has the fastest AMD CPU available. It has the most powerful NVIDIA GPU available, and it's all packaged into a 15 inch gaming laptop that quite frankly, nothing even competes with from the Intel camp. Like if you see videos or products out there that are like, hey, this Intel laptop is the fastest. No, like it's not even close. So this is, it's a testament to how good gaming laptops have become over the years. And also it's a testament as to how much AMD has done over the past couple of years to really bring something special to the gaming laptop or just high performance laptop market. So at the heart of this product, is the 5900HX. It's the flagship AMD laptop processor, eight cores, 16 threads, and this thing is fast, like super fast. It's fast in games, it's fast for work, and if you compare it against other gaming laptop products that have Intel chips in them, there's just no comparison. This is so much better and so much faster than anything that Intel has to offer, and even on their desktop level. Like normally laptops and desktops, you'd separate them, right? In terms of their performance. But this thing is able to deliver better multi-core performance than every single desktop chip that is made by Intel that has eight cores. And this thing can sustain it. 4.1, maybe 4.2 gigahertz, sustained performance for an unlimited period of time. That's with the GPU running full tilt. That is what AMD is able to deliver right now in early 2021. Now the GPU in here is also really powerful. It's an RTX 3080. This one is a 130 watt version. It's very powerful, but it's not gonna be as good as like a desktop RTX 3080 in terms of just raw GPU performance. But gameplay on this thing is awesome. You're getting excellent frame rates in even some of the most demanding titles on the market right now. And because the GPU is being fed 130 watts, this is near the limit of what this GPU can even deliver, right? I'm sure there's some devices that are gonna come out eventually that have I don't know, 160, 170 watts, like they're just pumping that in, but it's not gonna be much better this, right? The whole diminishing returns with GPUs, it's gonna be a little bit faster, but this is near the limit of what an RTX 3080 can deliver. And this is all packaged in a 15 inch, relatively thin device, right? This isn't like super chonky. This is a well engineered piece of equipment. And the best part, there's no throttling. The whole thing can sustain the fast speeds and all of that stuff without any dips in performance. And the reason why is because of how they've engineered this. This is the Zephyrus Duo with the pop-up secondary screen, so you get some nice airflow behind there, and it's running liquid metal, but they've also tweaked some elements of the thermal design. So you just get a really powerful system, it's running AMD's newest stuff, but it's cooled really well. This has cooled better than last year's Intel version, and it's significantly faster. Now the panel up top on this model is 4K 120 Hertz. Now they claim that it's a three millisecond response time. When I measured it, it was coming at four and a half, still super fast. It's an awesome screen. It's bright and it's colorful. The secondary panel is also 4K across, but it's obviously not as tall. This is a touch screen and you can do whatever you want with it. You can put your videos on it. You can put secondary information on it. You can have it up when you're playing games. It's so much more useful than you might think just looking at it. Like when you own something like this or you just have access to a second monitor, having screen real estate is always useful. And the way this is designed, like it's just a regular laptop, slightly thicker than a regular laptop. But yeah, this is just, in my opinion, a really smart way to have more screen on a laptop. Now they do have a 1080p option. So it'll have a 1080p top panel. I think it's 300 Hertz as well as a 1080p bottom panel. And if it were my purchase decision, like somehow I was in the fortunate position to be able to pick up one of these, I would totally go for the 1080p option instead of the 4K. Like the 4K panel is nice, obviously, but you have a higher battery consumption, but you also lose a lot of the benefits of a 4K panel at a 15 inch screen. Like you just, again, if you're just doing photo and video editing and that's why you picked up this thing, then sure. But if you're playing games, I'd go for the 1080p for sure. Now there is something cool that they've adjusted this year. On last year's model, I noticed that if you did get the 1080p top panel, the secondary panel was still 4K. And if you've ever experienced multiple monitors on a computer and they're different resolution, it's a pain in the butt, especially when they're stacked on top of each other. There's just a, it's just a, a resolution thing. The way Windows handles it, like it just, doesn't scale it nicely, especially if you're all tabbing between things. Now they match them. So if you get the 4K panel, the bottom will be 4K, but if you get the 1080p panel, the bottom will also be 1080p. So was, I think it was smart for ASUS to do that. But yeah, the screens, they're good, 
but you just gotta choose wisely. The battery in here is pretty big, it's 90 watt hours, but because this is such a powerful system and it's got two bright 4K panels, it doesn't last particularly long. I got four and a half hours with my regular test. If you disable the secondary screen, and I just did it out of curiosity, I got five and a half hours, which was longer than I expected. Like that's, I don't know, almost 20% with just a strip of screen being removed. So if you're bringing this out for work, you could probably extend it a little bit by disabling the screen. And this is all with the 4K panel. If you have a 1080p panel, it'll probably last a little bit longer. So battery life is good for what it is, but it's not like a full day battery at all. The AC adapter on this unit is pretty big because it's got the most powerful configuration. It's 280 watts, it kind of has to be to fuel this thing. But on the lower wattage configurations, the AC adapters are smaller. And if you want to, and if you need to, you can power this thing with 100 watt uh, power delivery through USB-C. But obviously you can't run this thing at full tilt using the USB-C connection. Okay, uh, now the rest of the internals, in case you're curious, there's a couple things I wanna point out. So there's two NVMe's and they're configured in RAID right out of the factory. And there's also 16 gigs of RAM that's baked onto the motherboard and you have one slot. So you can upgrade it up to 32. And there's also an upgraded speaker system. So there's two that's down here and then there's two up at the top. They sound better than what I remember from last year, but they're still not amazing. I think it's just an issue of bass. There's a distinct lack of lower frequencies when it comes to any gaming laptop, to be honest. But yeah, it's slightly improved, but don't expect too much. And that wraps up the inside. Now there is one other thing that I thought was kind of neat in the box. So when you purchase it, the AC adapter comes in this kind of like cardboard box thing. And maybe this was on last year's model as well, but I didn't really realize it. But you can do this. So you take, it's just cardboard, right? Very unassuming. We place it down. And now, if you want to use this thing connected up to an external keyboard or an external mouse, you can place it onto this dock. I wouldn't even call it a dock. It's more like a stand. And it's in this really nice position and angle. Like the screen is at a great height. The secondary screen is at this really nice angle. You have your external mouse, external keyboard, and you're just, you're doing stuff. You're just getting stuff done because this is a weirdly nice orientation slash configuration. But it's unfortunate this thing is cardboard. It would have been nice if this was some kind of plastic for some durability, but it's that perfect angle and they've kind of repurposed the packaging for that. I'm sure there's other ways to do it. Like you could probably get a legit laptop stand that wasn't this, but it comes in the package if you want to try it out. Okay. Uh, ports real quickly. There's a minor change to this year's model. So there's a micro SD that they've included and there's also an update to the USB-A ports. They now support USB 3.2. So the keyboard and trackpad. Now, in order to be able to get this kind of pop-up screen and this kind of airflow, you have to shift the keyboard and trackpad down. And I'm okay with the keyboard. I actually like typing on this thing. They include a wrist rest, but I'm one of the weird people that just, I don't mind typing on this thing without the wrist rest, but the trackpad, I don't like. It's been, I don't know, several years that this type of trackpad on the right has existed and I've never grown used to them. I think if you're forced to use this every day, you will go crazy. <laughs> like you will not enjoy this experience. You're just gonna have to have an external mouse. I think the secondary function, like having the number pad is really its main purpose. And if you need to, you can use it as a trackpad in a pinch. But that is the new Zephyrus Duo and it is, it's just so much better than last year's model, partly because of the new AMD chips with their excellent performance, but it's also because of price. This has dropped down in price by 500 bucks. It's now starting at $2,200. It's not cheap by any means, but you're just getting a lot for that $2,200 price point. This goes up, it goes up, I think to like over 3000 bucks if you really wanna spec it out. But I just think that this package, because of what AMD offers, like even at the base model, it's an eight core CPU that outperforms the vast majority of desktops out there. Like this AMD stuff is just so good right now. But that is the Zephyrus Duo. And yeah, it's literally the most powerful thing I've seen in the studio to date. Okay, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it. See you guys next time.